It is Wednesday, November 16th, 2016, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. Yesterday, a friend of mine decided to be a very mean person and introduced me to this game. And I ended up playing, I don't know, how many hours and hours and hours of trying to beat it. And I didn't beat it, uh, even though I think I had the concepts down. I just kept making too many mistakes. So, you know, it was definitely very frustrating and after a while, and, and I was super addicted because I have an addictive personality. And lo and behold, you know, I, like I said, I spent hours on this. So as some sort of strange, twisted reward punishment scheme, uh, I decided to refactor the whole code base into TypeScript. So what I thought I'd do is I went ahead and recorded the entire session and to save everybody's time, I'm going to go ahead and narrate what I did and I've reduced it from I don't know how many hours down to uh, just 10 minutes. Okay, so the first thing I did is uh, basically put some ignore stuff in place. I started working on grid as the first class to refactor. Um, and I also added in a TS config to set the compilation to UMD and pretty much get off and running. So you can see here, I went ahead and renamed grid to grid TS and I'm refactoring it. And then I moved on to tile because tile was kind of this dependency of grid. And I thought, well, why not go ahead and refactor and you know create a, another class called point 2D because it seemed like something that was going to be reused. I did some signature work here to try to make it, you know, more useful. It seemed like there was uh, some interesting points where why not, you know, allow for different signatures. I end up updating this a little bit more. Um, I also add in later to the TS config, I add in strict null checks, which is also kind of neat because it basically kind of caught some issues uh, along the way. And so here we are again in uh, grid, just continuing to refactor. Uh, and adding signatures in uh, in places where it made sense, especially with x, y coordinates. So I could pass it a point, um, you know, uh, something that was analogous to a point, because I created interfaces, for pretty much every class I created interfaces to match, because I wanted to follow the same proper um, a dependency injection style that this uh, this application was set up. By the way, the number uh, that's going off on the upper right there, that's that's actually seconds and then minutes, and then we'll get into hours here in a second. Um, so now we are again, you know, working between grid and tile and getting, you know, things just better and better all the time. Uh, I, I refactored a lot of stuff that didn't seem to, that just seemed redundant. So in this case, we've got this fill method that I went ahead and created um, because there was a couple cases where it was like the same kind of code was being operated on and I wanted to you know kind of reuse it uh, over and over so that's what that was and you know again keeping sure that I um, try to not expose the classes like make it a, a forced dependency so I every time I made a class I would end up creating an interface later on you'll probably see me um, actually create constructor interfaces so that you know when the dependency injection occurs I can reference that so you can see here I'm actually taking fill and expanding it out and using signatures in a really cool way to make sure that if you call fill you know that you're basically gonna get an empty uh, array is uh, a an empty array or in this case it was a multi-array so then I'm looking at these polyfills and I'm thinking you know, I don't really want to turn those into TypeScript. I'm just going to include them into a folder and then I can actually load them up later and I start refactoring the uh, uh, the HTML file. And then again, I start looking into local storage. Uh, I actually dove in deep and looked at uh, the actual local storage interface uh, in the in the lib, uh, TypeScript lib, but you can see me looking at it there. But, you know, it, there was no way it was going to match perfectly. so. Um, I went ahead and, uh, you know, kind of went from there and, um, you know, just kind of, you know, winged it basically. I grabbed the actual signatures and I put them in place and then I kind of placed them in here into this fake storage class that I, uh, I created. Again, fundamentally, nothing's really changing here. It's just kind of setting things up in a more TypeScript friendly way. The, there was this uh, storage uh, instance and I thought, well, why not go ahead and, you know, make it an instance inside the module. There's no reason to uh, have it be instantiated every time. It just seemed not to make sense. 
Although I could per se, you know, try to reduce some sort of thing, but it just like, why? It just it didn't make any sense to me. And then I struggled with keeping local storage manager a class or making it a module because the actual, me none of the methods were actually, um, they, they, they were all basically static. So why not, you know? And then you see me going back and forth there trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I ended up uh, eventually converting it over to being a class so I could use the interface and do true uh, dependency injection. So here we are in the keyboard input manager. Uh, I went ahead and moved the key map into its own little constant. It's only used internally in the module, so why not like have it uh, up and out of the way? Then we start getting into uh, like refactoring all these events uh, and adding in all of the proper typing into the parameters and the return types. You know, in a lot of cases I was looking at the code and kind of going, why is this called this? It doesn't make as much sense and did kind of my own embellishment of changing some of the property names. There's also a really weird uh, bug that you'll probably look at here eventually where there was a method that mapped to a Boolean that obviously wasn't noticed and that was uh, keep playing I think it was it's a, it's a in that I ended up like changing that around uh, as well and then using interfaces to keep things consistent so now we're you know we want to get our HTML activator or sorry HTML actuator and game manager up to snuff here uh, so again I'm just kind of cleaning it up uh, putting the properties in place I made things uh, private or protected where it made seem to make sense and I made them read only when it seemed to make sense Obviously converting all of the varus to let since that's kind of the, you know, de facto standard at this point in ES6 and uh, TypeScript. Um, I did put a, a, a query up on uh, Reddit about what people were doing with that. And it seemed to be most people are actually going forward are using let. So that seemed to be a logical thing to do. If you already have code that has var, it's no big deal. You see here, I uh, you, you notice I changed the keep playing boolean i gave it an underscore I started refactoring this to use you know public and private stuff because there was some weird conflicts there and then again i applied getters where it made sense uh to expose those properties to match the interface that was uh, being used in this case i game state which i later on kind of struggled with a little bit to try to make sure that i was properly applying the state between the different classes there's an actuate method that uses metadata, and metadata is actually the state. And there's the actual method, so. We're struggling with some of the actual interfaces and kind of type signatures that were um, present, and then eventually I figured it out. There's gonna be some interesting pauses here and there when I go take a break but you probably won't notice them because the minutes will go by very fast. Then I took, and it seemed to be logical to convert the direction uh, values into an enum, and I made it a constant enum. I eventually moved that, there you go, into a movement uh, TypeScript file. I kept it a declaration because I didn't need to compile it. And here we are trying to wrap up the game manager because there we go, we got, went ahead and imported it because the application was where all of the uh, instantiation, the instantiation was occurring. So it seemed logical to go ahead and uh, apply uh, the imports there. I went ahead and did a quick uh, inspection of the code to make sure there wasn't any silliness. Then I went ahead and included require.js because the UMD modules don't actually instantiate your code um, by default. They, they, they're just modules, right? So, and I included the, um, I went ahead and brought in the, the declaration file. And then I started debugging it. There really wasn't that many errors. I just want, I just kind of got through a few things. There was a few little kind of hiccups in some of my refactoring, like an added underscore for no reason. Uh, you know, so I started, then I started playing around with, can I get WebStorm to launch this manually? And 
and you know I found a few little things that seemed to not line up so I, I kept going and then eventually what happened is um, it, the game started to work uh, you know after very little effort but it was showing the wrong um, it, it wouldn't show the score correctly it would show the uh, yeah which it would show like the, the best score or whatever Did some more cleanup and did some more inspections while I was like committing the files. There was a weird kind of check-in problem that took me a minute to resolve, uh, but eventually I got everything checked in. And eventually I did a pull request uh, to 2048 with a TypeScript uh, branch. Let's see if he actually wants to do anything with that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you know, I thought it'd be fun to just kind of like you know, record it, show it off, uh, and then I can link you guys to the actual repo um, and kind of see what I did, and, and we kind of go from there. If you like this style of content, uh, please give it a like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.